for today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys some plants that I think are really easy propagators, and I'm going to go through the steps on propagating them as well. So probably the number one easiest plant in the world to propagate is the pothos, and there's many different types of pothos. This one's a golden pothos, and I've had this one for quite some time. It's getting kind of long, so I'm probably going to be cutting it and propagating it very soon. Saying that, there's lots of different types of pothos, but the method's the same. These are the two cuttings I've got growing here, which I propagated some time ago. This one's a neon pothos, and this one is a satin pothos. So pretty much to propagate a pothos, it's pretty straightforward. Pretty much what you want to do is take a stem, like so. The stem's got nodes running all down it. Each node is where the leaf and the each node is where the leaf comes out from. You want to cut just below the node. That leaf that's attached to the very bottom node, take that off. Make sure you've got at least one or two leaves remaining on the stem. Pop it in some water, put it in a spot where it gets bright and direct light. Give it a few weeks and it'll grow some roots. Once the roots are one to two inches long, you can pot it in soil. Pothos are probably as easy as it gets with propagating plants. They're pretty straightforward and they usually root up pretty successfully most of the time. Before I continue with this list, just one little thing I mentioned that goes for all these plants when you're propagating, when it comes to propagating in water, you don't want to let them sit in the water for too long. Basically you'll put a cutting in water, it'll grow roots, two inches of roots or so, you can pot it in soil and it's fine, but if you leave those roots in water for too long they will become well established water roots which are basically adapted to live submerged in water. You move them into soil when they're at that stage, they're not going to convert over to soil roots that well and there's a 50-50 chance the plant might not adjust and just die, so it's better to just let them grow one to two inches in water and then, pop, put, and then pot them into soil. Plant number two, vining philodendrons. They're basically the same as a pothos, so I'm not going to go into explanation about propagation, it's literally exactly the same as a pothos. But I'll just show you a few of the types that I have so you know what is available uh, out of the philodendron family because there's so many different philodendrons some are vining, some aren't. For example, this one's a silver sword philodendron. Then you've got your philodendron micans, which looks very much like a heart leaf philodendron, except it's got kind of a velvety type of leaf and it's got a slightly skinnier stem sort of build to it. Other than that, it's very much the same as a heart leaf philodendron. This is actually cutting off a heart leaf philodendron that I've propagated. Um, I don't have the mother plant here because it's actually outside, but yeah, that's a philodendron heart leaf. That's a heart leaf philodendron. Quite nice. Probably one of my favorites though is the philodendron Brazil. Uh, I just love the colors on these and yeah, it's pushing up a new leaf there. So I'm gonna give this another month or two once it gets to about this tall, I'm gonna take a propagation cut from it. And yeah, same process as a pothos, very, very easy. Plant number three, the dwarf umbrella tree. So there's another one that's an easy propagator. It's not a fast propagator though, so there is some time invested in just waiting for it to grow roots, but it usually grows roots pretty well. So this one's a variegated variety. There's also a dark green variety, which I have growing elsewhere, hence why it's not here. But this is a cutting I've propagated from my darker green variety, and as you can see, it's grown in quite well. Basically, to propagate an umbrella tree, you just take a cutting off the top of the tree, whatever, whatever length of stem you feel like you want, take off almost all of the leaves from that stem, just leave one or two leaves on the very top, and that's it, and remove the rest. Pot it directly in soil and keep that soil moist until it grows roots. Once it grows roots, you can then get it onto a normal watering schedule where you let it dry out a little bit between watering. You just want to keep that soil wet until it grows roots though. So as you can see here, that's the original leaf that it came with. This one, this one, and this tiny little one just pushing out here are all new growth. So this plant is rooted up and it's basically a tree now. You can also propagate umbrella trees with just a leaf as well. Um, just by breaking off a leaf keeping the stem of the leaf attached to the leaf, of course, with the butt of the leaf also attached, and pop that in water, and it usually roots up as well, and you can plant that and grow a tree from that. I'll leave a link on the top of the screen. I actually did a video all about umbrella trees where I go more in detail about all this stuff regarding them, so I'll leave a link at the top of the screen if you want to click that and go watch that one. Next plant on the list, the coleus. Coleus has come in many different colors. This is a red coleus. Um, this one is actually one I've propagated myself. I have a quite a large coleus plant on my balcony and I, I'm not going to bring it in because it's kind of big and it's kind of settled out there. But I basically grow this um, from that. So coleus are another easy one to propagate. You basically just cut a stem. It doesn't matter where you cut the stem. Unlike pothos where you have to cut below a node, coleus can grow roots out, of the, out from anywhere on the stem. So you just take a cutting of a stem rip off most of the leaves again, just leave the top 
new leaves, the top four or so leaves on the top root tip there, and that's it. Pop it in some water, put it in a well lit area, and give it some time to grow roots. These actually root up very quickly. Sometimes if it's the right time of the year and you put coleus cuttings in water, you'll have roots within one to two weeks sometimes, roots will be quite visible. So depending on what time of year it is, if you do it the right time of year, like spring or autumn for example, these plants actually root up very quickly. Um, usually you can pop a coleus cutting in water and it'll have roots within two weeks. So it's quite quick. Um, but again, it depends on the time of year, but generally they're fast with rooting up. Same story there, one to two inches of roots, pop it into soil and you're good to go. Next easy propagator, aluminum. Now aluminum is another very easy propagator. It's actually very similar to propagating um, coleus. Uh, exact same concept to be honest. It doesn't matter where you cut the stem. It can grow roots out of the stem and out of the nodes. It doesn't matter. So you can cut the stem wherever you like at any length you like, pop it in water. Again, it roots up quite quickly like coleus, usually a couple of weeks and you've got enough roots to plant them. You want to remove, again, majority of the leaves if you can. These can handle having more leaves attached to them than a collier. So found with a collier's cutting, you need to just leave the last, like, four leaves at the very top of the stem and that's it. If there's any more leaves on the stem, uh, the whole thing just dies because the leaves are sucking too much nutrients and they're just draining the stem and the stem doesn't have roots to replenish that yet. These aren't as bad with that though. You can kind of leave majority of the leaves on them if you want and pop them in water and nine times out of ten, they still root up quite well. One to two weeks, I'll have roots. You can pop them in water when you've got about an inch of roots. So, again, very easy. These are kind of an easy plant in general too. Um, they'll let you know when they need watering because they will start to wilt a bit. You water them, they pop back up within the hour and they're pretty good. Another type of vining plant, Syngonium. Syngoniums come in a few different colors too. The propagation's the same. Uh, very similar to like with the pothos. Again, you cut it below a node, pop it in some water, allow roots to grow, pop it in soil. This one is a cutting as well that I've grown from a mother plant, which I've got outside again. Um, and it's grown quite a bit. This was originally like three leaves, four leaves when I potted it up and um, there's all this new growth popping up now. So it's doing pretty well. Next one, Pilea peperomoides. These guys are incredibly easy to propagate. They do it all by themselves. Basically, as this plant gets bigger, because this is only a very small one, this one's actually from a propagation. But as this gets bigger, it's gonna grow a little baby plantlet next to itself. So it's already starting to do it. I don't know if the camera can pick it up because it's tiny, but right in there. I don't know if you can see it, but right in there next to the base of the plant, there's a new little like baby plant coming out. And as this plant gets bigger, it'll produce more and more little baby plantlets around the base of its own stem. So you just let them grow. And as they get to a decent enough size, you can kind of break them off with some roots of course, um, and pot them up, and, and they'll grow into a whole new plant. So you don't even have to do anything, they just produce their own baby plants by themselves. Next one on the list is the cordyline. Um, these are more of an outdoor plant usually, same as the coleus that I was holding up before, I kind of forgot to mention that. Um, they can be kept, coleus can be kept indoors, but it's usually an outdoor plant because it's more light demanding. Same as the cordyline, you can keep it indoors, uh, but you need to have pretty bright lights for it. Um, so either somewhere where it gets a little bit of sunlight preferred or at least very very bright indirect light um, but generally people keep these outside as garden plants because they do get kind of tall and they, they just like brighter light than usually what you can give them in a like indoors um, but yeah I have seen them indoors they're just near a window where they get lots of light and they'll usually do okay so this one's a red cordyline you can get a tricolored cordyline as well which is a completely different color as well but they're quite nice um, the propagation of these is very much like a Dracaena, uh, which I'll talk about in a second with Dracaenas, they're the next one on the list actually, but um, this is only quite short. These get very, very tall. It'll be like a single long stem with the heads of leaves on top of it. So when this gets taller, I can snip, I'll turn around, I can snip this head off. When this stem here gets much, much, much taller, I can snip this head off and propagate it. Where I've snipped on the stem will regrow more heads. So if it's got one head, I'll snip it off. It'll regrow into two new heads. As for the head I've snipped off, I can stick that straight into soil, keep the soil wet, it'll grow roots. Or I can put it in water and let it grow roots that way and then pot it up once it's got a couple of inches of roots. Either way, it's whatever you prefer doing, but they're an easy one to propagate. Next on the list is the Dracaena. Like I just said, they're just like the cordyline. I've got my big Dracaena here. 
Um, so same story, you just want to snip off the heads of the Dracaena and pop it in water or in soil. Obviously in soil, keep the soil wet until it grows roots. So this is one I've propagated myself off of this big one here. It's basically ready to go into a proper pot. I've got it in like a Coke bottle at the moment. And it's kind of, um, it's kind of an eyesore as it is, being in a Coke bottle like this, I do it for a reason. Because it's see-through, I can see the roots. So there's roots there, there's roots there, and a little bit there. And that's why I put it in a Coke bottle, because I can actually see that it's growing roots. And once it's at the point like this, where the roots are touching the edge of the bottle, I know it's ready to go into a pot. I could leave it in this a bit longer, but I kind of wanted it in something a little bit nicer looking. Now it's actually established. So yeah, I just popped this straight into soil, kept the soil wet, took about a month, and then it had roots, and um, now it's ready to go. Dracaenas are a slow plant with growing roots, uh, so don't hold your breath on them. They're similar to the umbrella tree. They might take one to two months to grow roots enough to be established. So you've got to keep that soil wet until that happens. Or ideally, you can just pop them in water and do it that way. And like anything you're propagating, whether it's your cuttings in water or in soil, keep them somewhere well lit. Bright indirect light is the best. Next one on the list, it's an easy one, is the Hoya. There's many different types of Hoyas. This is the only Hoya I have, to be honest. Uh, I'm not even fully sure what it is, so if anyone in the comments knows what it is, let me down below, because it was kind of just... This was given to me as a cutting as well, like a tiny little cutting. Quite some time ago, I threw it in my frog terrarium and it kind of got forgotten about. It kind of got buried under all the other plants growing in there and I just honestly forgot all about it. And then when I recently redid my frog terrarium, which you can go and watch the video of that if you like, yeah, just scroll back and you'll find it, it's not too far back, but I found this Hoyer in there and I'm like, oh, that's right, I had a Hoyer in here. So, and it's like grown a lot more since when I got it. When I got it, it was like three or four centimeter sort of size. It was just like a little stem like that with one leaf. And yeah, then they're not a crazy fast grower, not as fast as a pothos, because in that terrarium it got kind of overshadowed by all the other plants so much, uh, it, it didn't grow that quickly. So I took it out and potted it up and it's had a bit of a growth spurt. So yeah, the process for doing these is just like doing again a pothos or a philodendron, like a vining philodendron, you just cut below a node, take the leaf off the first node, make sure you got at least one or two leaves left on the stem that you're propagating and, and pop it in water and let it grow. You can just pop it in soil too, that's kind of what I did in the terrarium, I just stuck it in the soil and forgot about it to be honest, I'm surprised it lived, but it actually grew roots, so yeah, they're pretty easy. Next one is the Christmas cactus, also known as the Thanksgiving cactus. Um, these can be kept indoors or outdoors, they're quite easy too. So these are actually a rainforest cactus, meaning they don't need direct sunlight at all really, they're not like the typical desert cactuses you usually hear about or see people keeping. Uh, these actually prefer just bright indirect light and a bit of humidity if you can provide that for them, that's great. They do flower, this one doesn't have flowers right now, it won't flower until probably later in springtime I'm guessing, it had its flowers last year so it's due soon. Um, this particular one gets white flowers, they've been cultivated to grow many different coloured flowers. Whites, reds, purples, pinks, oranges, uh, and just get covered in them sometimes. So they're, they're a very decorative type of plant. So propagating these is easy. Basically what you want to do, if you look at their leaves, there's like little joints going down all their leaves. Just snap it at a joint. And you want to just sit that leaf out for a few days. Uh, don't put it in water straight away, don't put it in soil straight away. You snap that leaf off at the joint let it sit out for two or three days because you want that wound to callus over first. Once the wound callus is over and it's all dry, then you can pop it in water and it'll grow roots within one to two weeks usually. Or you can pop it straight in soil and, and just keep that soil slightly damp until it grows roots. But you must leave that wound to callus first. If you were to pop it straight into water with an open wet wound, it will never grow roots. So this is actually some Christmas cactus that I've propagated myself. Uh, I've got just a few leaves in here which have all got roots on them and I mean yeah like I said very easy if you look very closely See here. I don't know if the camera picks it up on that joint there There's even little roots growing out of that joint and if I turn this around just under here There's roots growing out of that joint there So I mean yeah, almost every joint has at least one root growing out of it if not a couple They just seem to like growing little roots out of their joints anyways, so cut it there let it dry over in callus and pop it in water and then plant it up. Pretty easy really. Next one's a rubber tree. 
or ficus elastica. Uh, I did a video about these trees too, so if you want to learn more about these trees specifically, go and watch that one. I'll pop a link up top of the screen if you want to do that. But as far as propagating goes, which I also talk about in the other video, but I'll quickly cover it again. Um, they're like an umbrella tree with propagating. You can propagate from a leaf, but uh, the success rate of leaf propagating with these isn't as high as with umbrella trees, so it might not work out, but it's the same process. Snap a leaf off, pop it in water, hope it grows roots, basically. It might, it might not. A uh, better success rate is if you just take a cutting of a stem, take off most of the leaves, just leave the top two or three, and pop it in water. Using a rooting hormone on all of these plants I've talked about with cuttings, um, makes a big difference too, so if you have that, use it. But yeah, pop it in water and once it grows roots, pot it up. Um, yeah, this particular one is a Ficus elastica burgundy, but there's many different types of Ficus elasticas, which you guys will see if you go watch my other video about them. So yeah, go check it out. Last plant on the list is the Monstera, and that goes for all Monsteras, they're all very much the same. This particular one is a Monstera deliciosa. This one I've got growing in my lounge room. Uh, I don't even know if it fully fits into frame, to be honest, but I'll move it back a little bit. And crouch down. So yeah, it's got pretty tall growth on it. These get quite huge over time, um, but the, the technique... I'm gonna put this down, so it's getting heavy. Okay, I'll hold these ones instead. So these are mini monsteras or Raphidophora tetraspermas. Um, they're very easy propagators. Uh, again, same as a pothos, just take a cutting below a node, Leave a couple leaves on the cutting and just remove the very last bottom leaf that's where the first node is. Pop it in water and you're good to go. Same story with this one. This is a Monstera added soda. Um, these are probably one of the fastest growing Monsteras. These and the Raphidophora tetrasperma. They're pretty uh, on par with each other with growth speed. They're just very, very quick growers. Like all is here and probably from there up to there and all that there. That's all grown within like three weeks. They grow like a leaf a week. So they get about that big, that much longer each week because there's a gap between the leaves. So they're pretty quick where the Deliciosa is a lot slower. Most people don't really get the luxury of being um, able to propagate their Monstera Deliciosa. Because they're such big plants and they've got such massive leaves, they can't produce them as quickly as something small like uh, Adansoni, for example. Because that big leaf has to is such a strain on the plant to produce it, because it's so huge. Um, so they only produce one leaf, maybe every month, maybe every two months. Depends on the conditions you're keeping your plant in and the conditions it's living in. Even though they're technically a vining plant, most people don't actually see them look like a vine. Most people just see them looking very short and compact because they're such slow growers. You really got to put the time in to wait for them to turn into a proper long vine where you can propagate them. Well, that's my video on easy propagating plants, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Before I go, guys, if you want to leave a like on this video, that would be great. Don't forget to ping that notification bell so you guys know when I upload new videos. I'll also pop my Instagram down below if you want to follow me there as well. Until then, I'll see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.